Hi there, it's Kevin with the Rogue Market. Back from a long hiatus for summer vacation, I thought I would do a video explaining one of the things that I do on the side on Patreon for my subscribers over at not only Rogue Deck Builder, but here over at the Rogue Market on offering cheap product to the public. So as many of you may know, I own a local game store here in Richfield, Utah called Gone Rogue Games. It does okay, but mainly it's more of a hobby. Uh, the store pays for itself and then some, and it's just really a nice play place for a community here in a small town to get together and play board games and Magic the Gathering. So since we do have access though to different distributions and the Wizards Play Network and whatnot, I also can offer people the kind of distributor pricing for signing up for Patreon. So I run Patreon based on tiers of the Patreon level. And then I do a video from time and again on the Rogue Deck Builder channel, which I think I'm going to move over now to the Rogue Market channel because it is more finance related rather than brew related, uh, called the Pirates Plunder Picks. So what is Pirate Plunder Picks? Well, Pirate Plunder is a tier on our Patreon that if you contribute... $20 or more per month, you're entered into the Pirates Plunder tier, and you can get up to six products per month at distributor cost. And we have all have links in the description below on how to read up more on the Pirates Plunder. I'll give a little tutorial on how it works. Uh, basically, I will quote you a price with fees, and then shipping is, is also uh, the buyer's responsibility. So basically you front the money for the product. I'll order it on your behalf and ship it to you. And you can get six of those products per month, uh, for the $20. So if you actually do get the six products per month, you, it's a wash on your $20 Patreon fee. Uh, the smaller tiers also are allowed to get a certain amount, like the rogues passage is allowed to get two products per month. And the, uh, all about the crack is uh, able to get a booster box or a bundle per month at cost. So I'll be going over those prices here in a second for the Pirates Plunder tiers. So let me get my cheat sheets here of what the things are going for. Uh, typically the booster boxes can be had around the 80 to $85 mark after fees, depending on the, the particular sales. Usually the latest set we can get for a, a bit of a discount. And then the, the sets in standard tend to go up a little bit more when you're ordering individual boxes. Uh, we do have a distributor. If you do order in mass quantities, like we get enough people committed, then we can get the prices down a buck or two per box. Uh, shipping on a booster box, it's typically is around eight dollars it fits in a flat rate and two boxes around twelve dollars that also fits in a cubic flat rate and then it cases is as little as like 17 or 18 dollars for a case and of course shipping goes down for the more that you order uh, so that's one of the perks of course is just the booster boxes but there are also a plethora of other products that can be ordered anything from sleeves to deck boxes to board games to warhammer to uh, Pokemon to Yu-Gi-Oh, you name it. We we have access to four different distributors. We lose Alliance, ACD, uh, GTS, and Magazine Exchange for the order. So uh, there's a lot of things that if if you're part of this this little group here, uh, we can actually get the products to you, and it's it's pretty painless. Uh, sometimes there's a little bit of delay. I try to order weekly. Uh, some of the distributors, some of the smaller distributors that, that we order through, uh, like Alliance, for example, we usually only get board games through Alliance, so we'll tack on some other things every now and again. That's usually like a monthly order, but I digress. Let's talk about what this video is all about. This is the Pirates Plunders pick. So I'm going to start doing this video series here over at the Rogue Market because I think that it's, the audience is more tuned to it. So I like to give 10 picks of products that I I think are very good investments at this time period. There usually seems to be uh, good deals somewhere in the sealed market, and it's all about identifying those good deals. So without further ado, I'm going to go down at my top 10 list. This is not in any particular order. I don't know why. It's, so it's 10 products that I think are good buys right now for the uh, sealed market for Magic the Gathering. So let's start off with Conspiracy. So I can currently get Conspiracy about 150 bucks. 
Uh, this is this is original conspiracy, not conspiracy to take the crown. And you can see the conspiracy is actually floating around the 158 at the TCG market price. It's going to be heading towards 160. It has been flatlining for the last month about 155, but there has been a jump of conspiracy. I think this is a pretty good buy, and it's surprising the boxes are going this low. I know that it's it's still pretty pricey for a booster box, but if you compare it to some of the other ones that are out there, like the 150 price tag, Battle Bond currently goes for about a 195 is the cheapest. I can get battle bond for um let's see about some of these other ones here uh like masters 25 for example that's gonna be a lot more than 150 iconic masters it will be on this list about a 165 it does have a little bit more ev there but comparatively i think the conspiracy is is a pretty good buy right now it has a it has been a set that has tested time it doesn't look I, maybe they will return to Conspiracy New Conspiracy 3 and kind of mix and match through Modern Horizons, then Conspiracy, then Modern Horizons. I think that was the game plan for like Battle Bond slash Conspiracy one year and then Modern Horizons the next year for Wizards of the Coast. So I, I'm I'm not expecting a lot, some of the cards that were specifically to the set to be reprinted anytime soon. And there's a lot of juicy cards in the uncommons and common slots and especially the foils from Conspiracy that have a, a hefty price tag. So I think that's a pretty interesting buy at 150 uh, for Conspiracy conspiracy booster boxes so then on to my next product which is also going to be here on the don glare if you're ever looking to look at this site this is called don glare uh, so mtg.donglare.com and then you come over here and then you do the set EV and then put it at TC market price for the best indicator of what you could actually sell your cards for. Keep in mind if you are going to be trying to play the flip game or you actually open up product, uh, there will be fees associated with trying to sell on your various outlets like eBay, TCG Player, Cards here, etc. So anyway, uh, that's conspiracy. Conspiracy, let's, let's check in and see where is my little cheat sheet for conspiracy here. Uh, let's go ahead and go special sets and look for the conspiracy. I know they've got it here somewhere, and we can kind of see a, a price trajectory for conspiracy up, 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 and away. It's had that nice increase over time. Now the full set is about 270, uh, whereas the release of War of Spark, for example, is 250. So it's gone up $20, $20 in that time period. Explorations, Vidalcan Orries, Dak Faden, Scourge of the Throne, Council's Judgments, all are doing quite well. Um, market is kind of going down across the board for Magic the Gathering. I'm expecting this set to do very well if these cards do not get reprinted in the next tax season or Christmas season. Uh, you, you can see you already have a couple like a $3 in common in Trees and Sogre and even a $2 common in the form of Secure Tri Builder that is probably pretty poised to be a reprint in the Commander set. But nonetheless, right now, it has been, it, or it is in Conspiracy, and it's a pretty good uh, addition to the e average EV of a box. Uh, by being able to get two dollar secure tribe builders, you can actually buy this for about a buck twenty five. All right, so on to the next product is going to be iconic masters. So currently, I can get iconic masters for for let's see my cheat sheet here. It's what it's after fees. It's one hundred and sixty nine dollars before shipping for iconic masters, and I still like the set. I think there is a lot of value hidden away in iconic masters. It was considered a dud of a set. Uh, however, there have been some cards that have rebounded uh, quite nicely. So if we come over here and look at the Iconic Masters, you can also see that the set has been going pretty pretty well up here. It's had, had a little bit of a bump here. I mean, this is just July Summer Magic at a nutshell. This is Magic in a nutshell, going from its peak and having a little bit of an adjustment. And usually it should start to recover I would say let's let's take a look at last year. You can nope, there wasn't a bump. The bump actually started happening in August last year, where it bumped back down, and then October uh, it starts going up again. This was more of a recent set back then. So if we actually look at Iconic Masters, there are some cards that are doing quite well. Uh, Mana Drain, Horizon Canopy, Aether Vile, Cryptic Command. Uh, these three are very very staple cards in Modern. I don't think they'll be going down until they get reprinted again. You even have Commander staples like Avacyn and Elish Norn. Bloodgast is still in the Hogak Dread. Vine deck. Uh, Constance Created Sphinx is a very, very uh, highly uh, sought after card for Commander. Same with Vorniclex, the Voice Hunger. Thought Seize, staple in, in Modern. Shieldred, staple in Commander. Archangel of Thune, both Modern and Commander. Flusterstorm. All these cards are quite good in their respected formats. And we can even see there's like $9 Mishra's Bobbles, Thrawn Dynamos, um, Windfalls. These type of cards have just been going up, up, up. The only way these go down is if they do get reprints and even comments here that are about the dollar mark in the form of Star Compass. 
So any anyway, that is Iconic Masters. I still like the price point at about 169. I think this is the cheapest you're ever going to see this. It's going to I think the time is going to be quite nice to Iconic Masters, the test of time. So Eternal Masters was one of those sets that was kind of uh uh people got to turn their nose up to that set too. People felt like there wasn't enough value in Eternal Masters when it was first printed and then now eternal masters just gone through the roof with the value in eternal masters iconic masters had probably i don't know seven eight times as much product as eternal masters so it is very much more common and it's newer of course than than eternal masters however i'm still thinking one two years down the road people are going to be looking back at iconic masters and thinking this is actually a pretty good set i still like it more than masters 25 uh, because the value is more in the rares than it is in the mythics uh, for this particular set and i think masters 25 is really more the opposite more in the mythics rather than the rares so that at 169 i think is pretty pretty decent so on to the next one, which is another sealed product, and this is Modern Horizons. I also really, really like Modern Horizons uh, right now at the price point. So Modern Horizons can currently be had for 172 shipped. I think it comes out to 163 a booster box for Modern Horizons. And you can see that the, the set is stabilized off quite well and has actually even started going up. You have a, a $100 Ren and 6. You have a $40 Rare in the form of Force of Negation. Yes, some other highly sought after mythics and urza lord high artificer which is really good in commander and in modern and season pyromancer which is i still think a sleeper card is going to see more play in modern um spoiler alert i have a buddy if you remember morton morton's been a part of the rogue deck builder brand for quite some time i call him the kind of the grandfather of scred or the, the architect of scred uh has been using season pyromancer in scred and i believe he went 21 and 4 or something like that in five leagues on MT Joe with Scred with a Season Pyromancer version. So anyway, Modern Horizons is still a pretty decent uh, buy. There's also cards like Prismatic Vista that sees a lot of play in both Modern and Commander. And these are are, are really good long-term cards in the, in the form of Fiery Islet and the Sun-Baked Canyon. So both of those, are, are all those adding up to Modern Horizons price point at the 162, I think is still pretty decent. I mean, your box EV that you're going to be getting from Modern Horizons is... Uh, 191 so it's actually outpacing both iconic masters and masters 25 and can be had for cheaper than those so again i like modern horizons i this is a weird time period where with magic i think they overprinted modern horizons with anticipation that we'd have a very strong q3 and in fact q3 has been dismal q, the the third quarter or second third quarter of uh this year for sales has been awful for magic the gathering and we can see that in kind of the stagnation of the price of both war of the spark modern horizons and a lot of the products that have come out in this same window uh you can go back to my rogue market video that i did uh on monday on my main channel rogue deck builder for for more about that discussion so the one the the 172 ship price point i really like for modern horizons i've been buying a, a bunch of boxes personally and been actually been selling them quite well here locally um seems to be the, the pretty easy packs to 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 sell to uh both the modern and the commander players okay so on to the next set is war of the spark i still like war of the spark this is a set that is is held at cv okay but i'm thinking come rotation this is going to be one of the the sets that does uh boom back up in set EV. You can see that it's being outdone by both Ravnica Allegiance and Guilds of Ravnica. The reason I'm choosing this is currently this is the box that I can do for 85 shipped. So it comes out to be about, about uh, it's like, so that would put it eight bucks off of that. So what, 70, uh, you, we, I can get that for like 77, a booster box, I think, somewhere around there, 76, 77. And so it's like $85 shipped. I think that's a pretty steal of a price for booster boxes. I mean, long gone are the days that you could get booster boxes for 70 ships, 80 shipped. Uh, so getting a booster box that is as good as War of the Spark. I mean, this is going to be a set that is going to be looked on uh, very well. I mean, I think it's going to be even more... Uh, like people are going to like this set long term more than like Domineer or Kaladesh. There's a lot of power in War of the Spark. There's a lot of cards that are going to, you know, uh, have the test of time, even the common slot. 
And like right now, the problem with War of the Spark with EV is there just isn't any chase cards. One of the reasons it was opened up quite a lot is another set they overprinted. I think that's why booster boxes are going for so cheap because Wizards of Coast cannot get their act together. What happened is they didn't print enough War of the Spark for the initial release. It sold above and beyond their expectations and they are too slow getting it back to the printer and getting it back on the shelves where then other sets that already come out like Modern Horizons and Core 2020 and now people just don't care about the set. But $4 NARS set uh part of the veils still in the set we have uh i think all the god eternals are going to be good long term karn the great creator is still a uh, card that has proven itself in modern same with dread Har- Ar- Jet horde arcanus which is up to almost eleven dollars the finales are all great nickel bullis is going to be a planeswalker that people are going to uh, want for years to come and even liliana dread horde general is one of those that is very good and then we haven't even talked about teferi time raveler which is just an insane card in multiple formats so i, so I like sealed booster box of war of the spark at this price so that's kind of the kind of the known i wouldn't say that any of these are really discounted all that much this is your your typical price points of most of these sealed products that are still in stock so now let's talk about products that are out of stock as far as print or out of print that i think are good buys let's start here with the the signature spell book so uh the signature spell book gideon is another interesting one uh, there must have just been a lot of local game stores that opted out of this because i still have a distributor that has plenty of these in stock the price point is about 13 dollars for this the singer spellbook these aren't that expensive to ship i like three or four bucks i think to ship uh, but you can easily tack them on in your order and it doesn't add too much weight if you're on that pirate splendor order for your sixth product you know throw it in with a couple modern horizons cases and it's not going to add anything uh to your uh weight uh, comparatively. So the $13 is quite interesting for getting spellbooks because you can actually get back the value quite quickly on like the, the path to exile and rest in peace. Um, also the foils, you do get a chance of getting a foil and just taking rest in peace. For example, it's got about a full foil multiplier of times two. So, uh, it's 650 for the normals, it's $13 for the, the, the foils. Uh, that's pretty good on those particular cards. Path to exile doesn't really have that great of a foil multiplier as far as the foil one but even like martyr's bond is pretty good this is a card that will go back up in value uh as it sees a lot of play in commander and even like true conviction this is another card that does see a lot of play in commander shielded by faith uh black blade reforge getting jura these are all pretty well uh loved in commander worship does see play in modern from time to time it will only be amount of time before worship does see another deck i could even see a four of copy in a deck of just if there's a way to protect a creature and your opponents don't have a way then there's no way for them to kill you except for mill uh, but anyway uh, i digress on that i think this is a pretty good pickup at 13 dollars when the value the the mtg uh, or the the tcg uh, mid price is around 24 so you almost make double back right there with the getting spell book so that's an interesting one i don't know how long that deal will last for the 13 dollars for the gideon spell books all right so let's move on to the next one which are the gift packs 2019 so i already broke down 160 of these uh for multiple orders um these can be had for around i would say i, I i'm putting it at seven just because the labor of this is quite intensive that I'm, I'm tacking on a little bit of a labor fee for the gift packs for breaking them down uh gift packs are interesting at seven bucks because they contain four core 2019 booster packs so that alone at the seven dollar mark takes them down to a dollar 75 a booster pack what i like about core 2019 is it again i think is going to be a good set long term it's got some tribal cards which are nice but it's got the the holy trinity in core 2019 which is the crucible of worlds the uh, omniscience and the scape shift so the 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 holy trinity mythic uh i think are going to be very highly sought after long term scape shift is reasonably played in commander it's also played a lot in um it's actually a deck i don't i don't know why scape shift isn't an auto include almost every green deck or at least like like green black decks is the one i use scape shift in just to go get the combo of the cobble coffers or bulk tomb of yagmoth um however anyway let's not talk about specific deck techs here let's talk about like i escape shift has a deck in modern sees play from time to time a lot of play from time to time um it is seeing play right now in standard but of course that will rotate uh but it, it also with crucible worlds and omniscience seeing as much play as they do in 
Modern or in Commander, I think that Core 2019 will be a good set long term. So just the dollar seventy five a pack of these, I think, is a steal of a deal. These Vengeant Vampires, Angler Turtles, Angel Guardian, Immortal Phoenix, Rampaging Brontodon, all don't really have that much price. I know that Card Kingdom will buy some of these for. I think there's one of them that buys for a buck or two bucks, and another one that buys for sixty cents, and a couple other ones they buy for like fifteen cents or something like that. So I mean, there is value in these if you do break them down, and then Card kingdom the you know these junk cards um i really wanted vengeant vampire to see a standard deck it almost was playable with soren uh it does have a lot of synergy with soren to be able to cheat it into play with a 4-4 life linker and then sacrifice it to destroy uh creature opponent control and gain four life i thought that was kind of neat uh with the the soren uh interaction but so far no one's really played the vengeant vampire the lands also have a little bit of real world value but not too much because again these things were printed into oblivion so i think that this is still a good buy at seven bucks again i do not suggest trying to have me ship these to you because the shipping will cost about 40 to 45 percent of the price of what you're getting these for so we will break them down for you at a small labor fee uh usually i just ask if you like donate the dice or something like that dice does uh count towards the weight of the pack or you can just say keep the promos or something we can work something out uh to where uh, i'll break these down for you all righty so on to the next uh one is going to be uh the conquering hordes cons of tarkir event deck i've talked about this in the past it's still a pretty good buy so currently you can get a set so there's six boxes in a case or i guess it'd be a case or a box whatever you want to call of these these conquering hordes for $52. So uh, you can see that the price you break it down is worth $26.22. You times that by six. Of course, if you could get every bit of value out of these cards, then that's how much it'd be worth. However, most of this is junk. There's a lot of just absolute trash in this uh, Conquering Hordes. However, if you look closely, there's a Dictative Erebos contained in this uh, deck list. So Dictate of Erebus is currently being buy listed for Card Kingdom for seven dollars. So right there, six times seven, you've you've got them uh, almost all of your money back uh, from the Dictate of Erebus. So it's like what you have ten bucks left you have to to get back. Uh, that's where the dice come in. So this is what's interesting about the Cons of Tarkir event decks is they do have a dice, and most of these dice can actually go for between two and eight dollars. So the Cons of our, of of Tarkir are kind of these. Um, these softer colors, like these, uh, the, these ones right here. Uh, so there's a purple dice. I think this is the one that does go for the most and the, the blue one, and then the brown and the green one, and the red ones all, all do go for, uh, more than you'd expect because these were more of these exclusive dice and there are, there is a market for people that collect dice. I was very surprised looking at eBay and Amazon, uh, for these dice. So yeah, if we look over here for, for buying these dice, a set of them, um, you can get for $20 right now on eBay. And then we'll be talking about the dragons of Tarkir ones. They actually even go for more for a set of dragons of Tarkir. It looks like $16 for a set of them here. Uh, again, these are getting rarer and rarer as time goes on. Uh, there's a purple one going for six bucks. Uh, they do have real world value and, and apparently they sell on eBay. Uh, who knows if it's profitable at that point, but it is just something too that is just contained within that deck box. So, uh, going back to the Dictate of Erebos, uh, going back to the other deck lists, there are some other goodies kind of mixed in here with the Tormod's Crypts on Commons that do have real world value. Let's see if Tar Car Kingdom actually buys them. Uh, they do for 50 cents a piece. So that's another way to recoup. Uh, so a dollar per box. Uh, so you get six bucks from the Tormod's Crypts right there. So I think this one's interesting. Case of, of Koilos is being bought, I believe, for 25 cents from Card Kingdom. I think the Blood's Oak Champion was also 25 cents. Don't quote me on that. We'll look at it here. 20 cents that you can get from Card Kingdom by listing kind of this, this stuff. So if you do have faith in Dictative Erebos, especially if it is not reprinted, you can see Dictative Erebos continue to, to follow its normal trajectory of going up, up, up. It's kind of stagnated out from War of the Spark, but it had a huge increase here from Ultimate Masters to War of the Spark. A little bit of a price readjustment, but we should see at least this, this regular price trajectory right here continue to follow on and dictate to continue to go up in value. Uh, Journey Nix is very, very hard to come by now. Sealed product. Uh, this is, yeah, getting getting kind of old. Uh, funny saying about Journey of Nix, a lot of us played back during that time period, but new commander players need to be picking these up for their commander decks. It, it will continue to go up until it does get a reprint. Uh, 15 bucks from Card Kingdom, so they're very, very bullish on this card. Uh, alrighty, so 
On to speaking of event decks, this is also the Dragons of Tarkiri event deck. This is really just the price point that I can get these at. The Dragons of Tarkiri event deck can be had for $39. And the dice set, I mean, you're going to get, on average, you know, you're going to get six dice from this. If the dice set sells for $37, there's your money right there. There's some interesting things in this particular deck. Uh, Thunderbreak Regent has been a card that has had a nice trajectory from time. Uh, hasn't really gone anywhere, but it had this little bump. Uh, I think this it made a deck. And you never know when there would be some way. Like, Soren just cheated out a, a vampire. Maybe there will be some way to cheat out dragons or reduce the cost of them. I don't know. They seem to be printing a lot of that tribal stuff, and maybe this one will actually you know, see a modern deck. Uh, Thunderbreak Regent, though, is 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 kind of neat. The buy list price is only $0.65 cents from Card Kingdom, but a buck from Channel Fireball. But it's really like this price point that I like it at just from the dice alone. Uh, you can make back your money. Uh, again, nothing too snazzy in here. A Temple of Abandon, if it does get reprinted in the next set for a standard, could be worth more than a dollar, possibly, if it's the, one of the lands to go in the, mana ba or in the land base. And this Miscutter Hydra, also was interesting that's the reason why i kind of put it on my list because it has been going up and the card kingdom is paying a buck 25 for it so that's another six time a buck 25 so you can get another 725 out of the the miscutter hydras if you were to break them down and just send them a card uh, card kingdom again we're looking at less than minimum wage when you put your your effort into it but some people enjoy playing this sort of game it's 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 interesting to get a bunch of bulk in return if you keep the product sealed maybe over time they will be worth something if cars even spike up in value this price point is just very very uh, uh, interesting at $39. Alrighty. So on to the, the last one is the born of the gods. Same thing with this one. The born of the gods one is getting interesting because the born of the gods can be had for $55. And there is some cards that do have, uh, buy list value like the crypt gas. So crypt gas in this one can be, has a buy list of $3. Uh, from Card Kingdom, so you make back you know six times three right there. It also does. I don't think the dice is no. The dice is not special from this one, and it also does the hero's downfall in this one that also has a buy list price of a buck thirty from Card Kingdom. So, yeah, this one's kind of a stretch, but all these ones do kind of seem good long term to keep sealed. Pack rats in here. I don't know. I'm always interested in these type of things. Leave them on the shelf for a while. I know they've been left on a shelf for a while, but as soon as these these cards uh, eventually, you know, Crypt Gas could easily have a double up. I could see if it doesn't get reprinted. Uh, th these could be a, a pretty good deal just to crack for the singles when you're getting them at the the value. If you if you 55, um, you're looking at. Yeah, what nine bucks a deck basically? So if if Crypt Gas ever goes up, bumps up a little bit more, here is now little Crypt Gas Pack Rat at TCG Mid already makes sense. Yeah, I don't really see anything else like maybe Zach or the Necromancer could go up. The problem with this is this is a promo for the Walmart pack, so there's just a bazillion of these in existence. However, I don't know. This one was kind of an interesting little buy at the fifty-five dollar mark. So I think that's a oh last but not least, yeah, there was one more interesting one that I put on here, which is the the Global Series. So this one, this is just absolute garbage. The Global Series Zhang Yang Yu and Mu Yanling, and I looked at this and like, man. How could even anyone even make money at this $7 price point? So currently you can get decks for, so they'll come in just the regular box at seven bucks. Like how could anyone make back that, uh, make back their money there? Until I looked at the buy list price for Mu Yan Ling from Card Kingdom. So they're paying $6 for Mu Yan Ling. Uh, and I've got all the buy list stuff that from Card Kingdom they're paying right now from this thing. So $6 for, for Mu Yan Ling. Uh, 45 cents for the token, 50 cents for the Ancestral Dragon, and 5 cents per land. And they actually do want quite a bit. Uh, forest, islands, plains, mountains. Um, no swamps in here. And then also 6 cents for the Ninetale of uh, White Fox. Doesn't want very many of them. So, I mean, you actually make back your money just unpacking these, throwing out these particular cards, and selling them to Card Kingdom. Again, it's, it's less than minimum wage. If you do bump it up to store credit, it's a way to turn, like, cash into store credit with card kingdom i guess to you know save on uh singles if you were to buy them from card kingdom every now and again card kingdom does have some steal of the deals they've they, their ultimate masters were incredibly low their war of the spark uh, uh singles were incredibly low on on particular cards um so i wouldn't discount card kingdom for a place to actually buy cards 
uh, from time to time. If you can, if you, you can turn it into store credit, it might make sense there. And so again, the $7 price point for this entire deck seems pretty interesting. A lot of these are kind of trashy products, but they're nonetheless, I think that who knows, who knows what time will tell with these particular decks and cards and, uh, some products that were absolute garbage back in the you know 2010 are now going for a ton of money. I remember I remember even playing at that time period, and be like, man, these decks are trash. No one wants them. They sat and rotted on shelves. And then a, you know a decade later, they're worth a, a, a you know three, four, five times more. I know a decade's a long time. If you invest in stocks other things like that, then this is still you know dismal, and then you have to find buyers for it. But nonetheless, this is the the rogue market was set up more of like a hobby, a what if, looking at pricing for Magic the Gathering. So there you have it. Of course, the ones I talked about earlier, I think are the better buys: Conspiracy at 150, Gideon Spellbooks at 13. Modern Horizons 172 shipped, War of the Spark at 85 shipped. All of those are, are really good deals at this at this uh, time in Magic the Gathering. So, kind of a longer video for the Rogue Market. We'll get back to the Rogue Roundup. There will be a Rogue Roundup uh, either Thursday or Friday. I'm going to try to get to it, and we'll also be doing some audits for previous specs uh, throughout the week. We're going to be hitting it hard in August. Uh, maybe we'll do another competition for uh, the the portfolio if we can find a good place to host the portfolio. If anyone has some suggestions for a uh, competition for a rogue portfolio, let me know in the comment section below. And, and if we can we can make it work, we will actually will do another one. Anyway, enjoy. Uh, thanks for sticking around. I know it's been a while since everyone's heard from me, but there will be more content coming shortly. This has been Kevin with the Rogue Market. The link's in the description below for signing up for the patron. Uh, it really does go to a good cause. This is what keeps me in business right now is the Patreon. So uh, this is this is kind of what I've been focusing on, and it's been you know pretty lucrative at this time period. You get a, a pack regardless if you come sign up for the $5 above tier. You get a, a booster, booster pack cracked in your honor each month. So you make back your money right there. Anyway, Kevin with the Rogue Market. Thanks for watching.